What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and in this video I wanted to show you a few of the possibilities for attack options using the framework of the attack triangle that we talked about in a previous video. So let's go ahead, we'll pull up the rink and uh, you can see we've got our basic uh, offensive attack formation that, that, that we're shooting for which is F1 that's going to be driving wide, F2 driving to the net and F3 coming in as the trailer man. And uh, within this framework, there are literally, literally endless possibilities of uh, you know, different combinations, different things that you can do um, to gain that advantage over your opponent in the offensive zone. So let's just go through a few of them really quickly, and uh, then that'll kind of give you an idea of what we're, what we're talking about here. So um, let's just go ahead with, we'll start with the very basic ones. Um, let's say F1 drives wide, and... Um, the defenseman doesn't go with him or he beats that defenseman wide, so he cuts to the net and takes a shot. Okay, So that's your, uh, that's your very baseline, most basic possible version of this. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Let's take another possible version. Let's say that our, uh, our F1 drives wide, our F2 drives wide, and the F2 beat his defenseman. Uh, F1's defenseman stayed with him. But uh, now we've got a possible pass across. So basically, F2's speed turned a 2 on 2 into a 2 on 1. Pass across, one time shot. Pretty straightforward as well. Okay, so we're going, we're going from basic to more and more complex here. Okay, let's say that uh, F1 drive, drove wide, F2 drove wide. Both defensemen stayed with their guys. So now, um, because of that, we've got a lane open in the middle for F3 to slide in. And let's just say that we do a little uh, little drop pass. And uh, F3's got a big boom and slap shot, so he walks in and uh, lets a one-timer rip from there, from the high slap. Um, so that's another option. You've got your F2 already at the net for the rebound, and obviously after F1 does that, he's going to drive through to the net, um, possibly setting a legal pick. Um, I'm a big advocate of legal picks. Uh, you can't really alter your your you, you can't adjust your um, you know your skating stride to go in and you know push a guy out of the way. Uh, but if you're on your way to the net and uh, you happen to get in the the guy's skating lane, um, you know you, use that with your own discretion. However much the ref uh, will let you get away with, but uh, possibility of a legal pick gives that guy a second, you know, a little bit of an extra second to get that shot off. So that's another option. But it works even if you don't do the legal pick. So. Um, either way, that's fine. Let's uh, let's go ahead and say we'll get a little bit more complex here. Let's say that F3 got delayed in the neutral zone, so he's not there as an option. Um, F1 can use a delay tactic, which is basically a misdirection. So he's got no options. Basically, uh, his defenseman has done a good job at, at sealing off the the middle, so he can't cut through to the net. There's no passing option across, so he can do a delay tactic, which is basically just a little misdirection. It gives F3 an extra second to get in. Now, when you see a delay tactic, F3, this is now a good chance for F3 to alter his point of attack. So instead of coming in right off that guy's inside shoulder, since he got delayed, now this guy is facing the opposite way because he's done a misdirection. Now would be a good time for F3 to come in and slide in more towards the middle um, because that, that option will be a, a much uh, greater passing option than just passing to a guy that's you know right beside him. So in this case, F3 would probably slide in the middle, then you can get a little pass across, and a one-time shot, Okay, which is another good option. Um, continuing along the same framework, there's another option that can be a possibility as well. If F3 reads it and uh, you know the play presents itself, F3 can actually come in and call for a cycle. Oops, sorry, I'm getting my mouse messed up here. I might have to redo this line. No, oh, it actually corrected it for me. Yeah, I'll redo it. Okay, so F3 can come in, call for a cycle, and then uh, execute a give and go after that. So it would look something like this. F1 cycles back. And we'll talk more about cycling in our video, specifically about cycling, but he can do a little cycle, then F3, swings this way a little bit. After F1 cycles, then he's gonna drive through the seam. This is another way of exploiting the seam. We always talk about the seam. It's really, if you use it effectively, it's a really good place to exploit on the ice. And a little pass out, and a one-time shot. 
Notice the quick release shots are really effective uh, in the offensive zone. So there's another possible option, uh, a little bit more complex option, but that stems off the, uh, you know, still stems off the same setup of the attack attack triangle. Um, instead of the one-time shot, he can also pass across to F2 if F2 is still available. Um, but that's another option um, for you coming in the zone if that presents itself. Continuing along those same lines of thinking, let's say that um, instead of turning back, F1 decides to drive it deep. So F1 drives deep, and now he gets to about here. Um, there's another opportunity for a cycle there, which would just be always cycle back off towards the boards. You don't want to cycle back towards the middle because that's where the pressure is that you're trying to get away from. Um, after this happens, this is getting into a little bit more complex uh, concepts here, but as he cycles, after he cycles, he's going to drive around to the back post. Um, F2 reads that there was a cycle, so he fills in the middle lane for the high slot, and F3 has come in to pick up the cycle. So now you've still got a triangle, uh, and you can work it out um, in whatever options present themselves here. That may be a pass across, that may be another cycle. Um, usually I do that in green. Let's see if we can change that color here. Oops. There we go. Okay, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of different options from there. Um, so let's get these arrows out of here. Okay, uh, there's another option that works really well. And guys, I'm just kind of laying this all out. So you can kind of go through this, um, you know, let, let your team know what the different options are. And then it's up to the players to read and react as they enter the zone. What's open, what, you know, what's open. And, and all of this um, works within the same framework of the attack triangle. So another option that, that uh, I kind of like is using the points. So F1 could come in, do a little misdirection. Um, maybe F3 has driven down for a possible cycle down low, which is, I, I think that's a really good option there. Um, and then, hopefully your defensemen aren't dogging it up the ice, and hopefully they're up there ready to provide some outlet passes on the blue line for you, and that can be another potential option. He does a pass to the point. Okay, and then, you know, from there, maybe the point, maybe the D shoots it, maybe he goes D to D. Um, but either way, you're going to want to have, as, as it looks like the shot's about ready to come, have those three guys collapsing on the front of the net for rebounds. So, yeah, so you can kind of see there's a whole lot of stuff available. There's, you know, I usually, I'll usually draw out, you know, really quickly eight or ten different options for my guys. Just let them know what's available so that they can be, um, you know, visualizing and thinking through that so that when it happens in a game situation, they can react accordingly. And uh, those are a few of your different options using the attack triangle as your framework.